Alright, magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Welcome sa panibago na naman nating lecture dito sa Libring Sit-In, Positive Psychology. For today, pag-uusapan natin yung lecture on optimism. Whenever you hear the word optimism, syempre, two words that come into your mind, positive thinking. And we have to talk about this because there are many people out there who misuse the idea of optimism or positive thinking. Ito ba ang sagot sa lahat ng problema? Basta positive ka lang, everything will be okay. Is it always good to be optimistic? Is it bad to be pessimistic? Yan yung mga sasagutin natin ta- tanong for this lecture. So, let's start by defining the meaning of optimism by the American Psychological Association. You can just read on your own. You can pause the video if you like. But the first thing that I want you to learn about optimism is optimism based on psychological research. And we have so many evidences on this. It is very connected to happiness. As in, ang dami nating mga ebidensya dyan, the more optimistic a person is, the happier the person becomes. So when you see a person who is happy, you can predict with with a very high certainty na kaya masaya yan kasi optimistic mag-isip yan. And vice versa, if you encounter someone who is sad or maybe ikaw mismo, you are sad, you can conclude or you can predict. The reason of that sadness is nagkukulang sa optimism yung taong yun. Because the higher the optimism, the higher the happiness becomes and the lower the optimism, meaning pessimistic ka, mas bumababa yung level of happiness. So, it's very connected to happiness. And that's one of the reasons why we talk about optimism in positive psychology. Remember, in this subject, positive psychology is all about happiness, aka subjective well-being. So, kaya natin pinag-uusapan to, no? So, going back to the definition of, of optimism, I want to highlight the red words. Yung mga red words na yan, ito ang magpapalalim ng kaalaman natin about optimism. So, I just want to, you, to read the red words. Attitude, good things will happen. Aims will ultimately be fulfilled. Anticipate positive outcomes. Um, confident of attaining desired goals. So, based on these red words, the first thing I want to highlight about optimism, it is a skill. Isa itong kakayanan. Which means some people are good at this, some people average, some people are not good with this. This is something that you can learn. This is something that you can teach. Oh, yan yung optimism, hindi siya emotion. Don't use optimism as an emotion. So, when you say, I feel optimistic, mali. Optimism is not something that you feel, it is something that you do. That's why Martin Seligman, one of the founders of Positive Psychology, nagsulat ng libro entitled Learned Optimism, which wherein in this book, ang pinaka-goal is to teach people how to be more optimistic because it's good for our mental health. So, pwede mo tong i-practice, pwedeng hindi. Yung mga ibang tao magaling dito, yung iba hindi. But good news, for people who are not so good with optimism, dahil ito ay isang kakayanan, ang good news dyan, pwede pa rin pala nating i-improve yon. So kung mababa yung optimism mo, which explains why you're always sad, good news, you can learn to teach yourself to be more optimistic. Which leads me to happiness insight number one. In a way, happiness is, our, is, is a skill or happiness is our choice. I hope you can connect the dots. Anong sabi sa evidence kanina? More optimism leads to more happiness. Optimism is a social skill, meaning whether or not you will be happy depends on you. If you keep on practicing optimism, if you keep on learning how to be more positive, yan ang magdedetermine whether you will be happy or not. Kaya nga between these two statements, merong isang tama, merong mali. Ito, malito. Kailan ako sasaya is a wrong question. Don't treat happiness as if it is a day that you wait for. Kailan kaya birthday ko? Ay, malapit na magpasko. Ay, malapit na mag New Year. Don't treat happiness that way. Happiness is not something that you wait for. It is something that you do. Kaya yung pangalawang statement, yung tama. 
kailan ko pipiliin maging masaya. This is more accurate. This is more in line with psychological research on happiness. You choose when you will be happy via optimism. So if you want to be happy today, what do you do? You need to do more of optimism. So again, point number one, optimism is a skill that we practice. Point number two, very important also, another imme uh, one immediate effect of optimism is it generates or sustains positive emotions. So kung gusto mong ma-feel good, gusto mong tumagal yung mga good emotions mo, na I, I assume lahat naman tayo, di ba? Gusto na feel good tayo lagi, right? One way to do that is to keep on practicing optimism. In fact, this is the reason why optimism is one of the treatments for people with clinical depression. What do they have in common? They have low levels of positive emotions and very high levels of negative emotions. So what do you do? To treat people with clinical depression, babalik ta rin mo. Gusto mong pabagsakin yung negative emotions niyan and increase positive emotions which papano gagawin? By teaching these people optimism which is what we do in cognitive therapy. Diba? In cognitive therapy, we deal with depression by fixing, by modifying how people think. Karamihan ng mga taong depressed, kaya depressed, mali mag-isip. Faulty reasoning. Very pessimistic. So you reverse the pattern. Let's lower down pessimism and increase optimism and improve and treat depression. Kaya rin, given this, no, mag-sidetrack lang ako ng konti, hindi rin accurate na sabihin mo na ang ultimate cause ng depression is hormones. That's what the biomedical slash disease model of the mind will tell you. Kaya depression, imbalance ang hormones, therefore the solution is drug therapy. Tuturokan mo ng antidepressant, tuturokan mo na kung ano-anong mga hormones, don't get, don't get me wrong, I also believe in that approach. At times, we have to use those chemicals to pacify the mind, but that is not the ultimate solution for depression. That is only one of the effects of a deeper problem. In the first place, bakit na imbalance yung chemical? Sagot, faulty thinking. So, yung imbalance hormones is just an effect of an underlying cause. So, if you want long-term solution for depression, Huwag tayo mag-focus masyado doon sa hormones, rather, what made the hormones imbalance, which is wrong way of thinking, aka extreme pessimism. So you reverse that by teaching optimism, it will improve hormones, which will improve depression. Okay? So let's talk about the how of optimism. Paano ba yan? So, alam na natin yung ibig sabihin ng optimism. Beneficial pala sa mental health natin yung optimism. Paano maging more positive? The word to remember to answer that question is the word focus. So, kung gusto mong mas maging positive or you want to teach another person to be more positive, what do you do? You fix, you improve on that person's focus. Your ability to choose or to control what you see. Diyan naka-anchor yung ability mo to be optimistic. What do you choose to see? What do you choose to process? The more you see the good, the more you process the positive, the more you are practicing optimism. Kaya gusto ko tong sinabi ng isang author dito, be happy not because everything is good, but because you can see the good side of everything. Hindi naman talaga lahat maganda. Marami ang mga bagay sa buhay. Pangit. But, in optimism, you have mastered this pattern where, in spite of the negatives, what do you do? You choose to process the positive. You search for what's positive in the midst of the negative. One classic example to know or to demonstrate how people focus on the positive or the negative is the classic half-filled glass. Do you see the glass half full or half empty? What differentiates optimists from pessimists what they focus on? Yung mga optimists, ang focus nila is the water. Doon sila nakatingin, doon sa water. That's why they are more likely to interpret this as malapit nang mapuno yung baso. They get excited. 
Kasi malapit ng mapuno yung baso, pwede na nilang mainom. Why? Because the focus is on the rising level of the water. On the other hand, the pessimist, ang focus nila is on the empty space of the glass. So they are more likely to interpret this as the glass is half empty compared to the other one. Ito, half full, half empty. Bakit? Ang focus doon sa empty space. Malapit na maubos yung tubig. Drought is coming. A lot of people will be thirsty. So what separates the optimist from the pessimist? Which aspect of this image are they focusing on? I want to tell you a story to further demonstrate how to do optimism. Choosing to process the good in spite of the bad. Merong tatlong magkakaibigan and these are all kids. As you know, kids, mahilig sila magyabangan. So the first kid, sabi niya doon sa dalawang kalaro niya, wala kayo sa lolo ko. My lolo is so rich that if you go to his house, his gate, yung papasukan yung gate, it's already worth 10 million pesos. The second kid was not impressed. Sabi niya, your lolo is poor. Because in my lolo's house, his doorknob, the simple doorknob, it's already worth 15 million pesos. Now, the third kid, syempre ayaw niya magpatalo, eh mga poor pala yung mga lolo niyo. Wala lahat yan sa lolo ko, sabi niya. In my lolo's place, you know the roof. The roof of our house, dun din kasi nakatari yung bata, it's already worth 350 million pesos. So, yung dalawang kalaro na impress, nagulat, grabe naman ang yaman ng lolo mo. Saan ba kayo nakatira? Oh, yung pala, the third kid, whose roof of their house is 350 million pesos nakatira sa ilalim ng tulay. Okay? Para sa mga hindi nakagets, oh, kasi yung bubong nila dyan, yung tulay mismo. ba? Which is worth around that kind of money, 350 million pesos sa mga worth ng tulay. So, the optimism of this kid, again, going back to our topic, saan siya, ang, saan siya nakafocus? What was he processing? He was processing their situation this way. We are so wealthy because the roof of our house is so expensive. Kapag may super bagyo, we don't have to worry about our roof flying away. Kasi ang tulay, hindi talaga nadadala ng super bagyo yan. How blessed am I? ba? Yun yung focus niya. Yung roof. Positive. He has chosen to focus the positive aspect of his situation. On the other hand, for those people who are pessimist, they will not focus on the 350 million roof. They will focus more on their situation below. Mahirap lang sila, mabaho yung bahay nila, maliit, walang titulo, baka next week palayasin, ni, palayasin na sila, so on and so forth. Again, you see the difference. Optimism, what do you choose to focus? Do you choose to focus on the good or the bad? Okay, so the word to remember to improve on your optimism is focus. You choose to focus what's good. Now, let's do this focus exercises. You can just um, pause the video if you like. Um, these exercises are designed to let you directly experience how much in control you are of your focus. So, I will be showing here a picture, visual illusion. You need to be seeing two different images here. Isang young lady and then isang old guy. Now, here's the instruction when I say young lady, I just want you to focus on the young lady. I want you to black out, screen out the image of the old guy. Okay? Just see the young lady. And then, the reverse is true. Kapag sinabi ko namang old guy, you do your best to see the old guy and disregard the young lady. Okay? Ready? Let's do this. Young lady. Young lady. Young lady. Young lady. Young lady. Now, focus to the old guy. Old guy. Old guy. Shift to the young lady, young lady, young lady, old guy, old guy, young lady, old guy, young lady, old guy, young lady, old guy. I hope you did well. Warm up pa lang yan, no? 
So, meron ba akong isang exercise? Ito na talaga yung very psychological. Usually, this is being done in therapy sessions. Okay? So, if an arrow points to the word good, ang gagawin nyo, I want you to recall a moment in your life, no matter how small, wherein that moment made you feel good, made you feel positive emotions. Happy, excited, special, whatever. And then I want you to go back to that episode in your life, recall it, what happened, who were there, so on and so forth. But if I point the arrow to the bad, to the word bad, go back an episode in your life where you felt something bad. Nagkaroon ka ng negative emotion. But limit it to simple negative emotions. Ha? Wag, wag kayo mag-isip ng mga traumatic experiences. Okay? Only simple negative emotions. Okay, let's do this. Ready? I want you to recall an episode in your life where you felt good. Go. You can pause the video if you like. And then, recall a moment in your life where you felt bad. Go. Again, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video and do the exercise. Okay? Bad. And then, you go back to good. Who were there? What did you feel? Why did you feel special? And then, you go to bad again. Pili ka ulit ng isa pang episode, a new episode in your life where you felt bad. And finally, for this exercise, go back to good. A moment in your life where you felt good. New episode that made you feel good. Okay, so what's the lesson of those exercises we did? Pinapakita lang nito that indeed, we choose our thoughts. We choose what we see. Whether we see the good or we see the bad, we determine what we see. It is our choice to think of a good thing or to think of a bad thing. I'm sure, yung mga gumawa ng exercise, di ba? Wala sa inyo yung na-out of control na yung mind. Yung someone who will tell me, Sir, hindi ko na makontrol. Hindi ko, hindi ko, makontrol, hindi ko mapigilan yung bad thoughts na nag-iisip na ako ng good thoughts. Of course not. Di ba? It does not go out of control. You think or you see what you choose to think about, whether it's good or bad. Kaya gustong-gusto ko tong quote na to eh. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Given a certain experience in our life, we choose to we choose how we will see that episode. Are you going to cry over it because you interpret it as bad? But baka kasi nangyari pa yan. Diba? Or are you going to be thankful for it? Smile because it happened. Now, you see the situation in a good way. Sino magdedetermine nun? Whether you see it as good or bad? Well, the exercises will tell you, you determine it. Okay? Another thing I want you to know about optimism is it is measurable. Pwede siyang sukatin and in the language of um, psychology, we use standardized test to measure optimism. And there are many instruments out there in the market that are designed to measure how high or how low your ability to be positive is. Okay? Like, may tinatawag tayong optimism scale. Meron din tayong tinatawag na life orientation test. Okay? Wherein, in that test, ito yung mga items na tinatanong just for you to have an idea kung ano ba yung mga items for optimism, you can just pause the video if you like. Letter R signifies reverse items, meaning the higher you score in these items, the less optimistic you are. Okay? Now, another thing about optimism, very important is it also follows the continuum model. Ibig sabihin, you don't use optimism and pessimism as two categories, parang sex, male, female, or religion, Christian, Islam, or some other religion. It doesn't work that way for optimism. So each one of us here are somewhere in the middle between extreme optimism and extreme Pessimism. So, yung ibang tao, highly optimistic people, they are closer to optimism than pessimism. Pero may mga tao rin naman na mas close sa pessimism than optimism. 
But we have a little bit of both. That's the point. Okay? We have a little bit of both. Lahat tayo dito may certain degree of optimism, may certain degree of pessimism. It's just a matter of which one dominates our psychological life. So we are in a continuum. It's not an either or or thing. Optimist or pessimist. No. Pareho tayong may optimism and pessimism. Iba lang ng degree. Depending kung saan ka mas malapit in between extreme optimism and extreme pessimism. Okay? Now, according to research, optimism is generally good for our mental health because it is predictive of the following outcomes. Mas optimistic ang tao, magagaganda ang mga nangyayari sa kanya. Uh, gumaganda yung academic achievement, what else, successful careers, more likely to have good health, and most likely, people who are optimistic become happier. So, wala pa ako nakikita ng mga studies na kapag optimistic, uh, maraming mga negative things na nangyayari, it's always generally positive. That's why, again, if you want to improve the quality of your psychological life, one way to do it is to improve on your ability to be optimistic. Now, the next question is, and I always ask this in my lectures, no? what makes optimism work? This is, again, another mediating question. Kapag optimistic ka, anong nangyayari kaya tumataas yung happiness mo? It's not enough for you to say that the more optimistic you are, the happier you become. Why? Anong nangyayari? When you practice optimism, what happens psychologically that leads to happiness? And I hope you have read the article na kasama dito sa lesson natin. Or for those of you na hindi alam yung article na yan, no, I am talking about this article. You can just go to Google Scholar and then search for the title of this article because this article gives us two reasons or two explanations why optimism leads to happiness. Okay? So, it's a very interesting article to read. May dalawang sagot daw yung mga authors dito. Number one, how does optimism lead to happiness? Because when you practice optimism, it generates motivation which creates effort. Kapag na-motivate ka, ginanahan ka because you can see something in the future, something good in the future, Let's say you want to be a cum laude, you see yourself having many medals during your graduation day, people are praising you, your parents are so happy, that excites you, that creates motivation. Something good that you see in the future creates motivation which will motivate you to exert effort to make that dream happen. And the more you exert effort, the more your dream comes true, finally one day it becomes true, you become happier. So yun yung unang pathway. Kung bakit ang optimism nag-lead sa happiness. Kasi nakaka-achieve ka. Diba? At bakit ka nakaka-achieve? Kasi na-motivate kang pagtrabahuhan yung mga achievements mo. So, your, your dreams come true. Another pathway, how optimism leads to happiness has something to do with low levels of stress. Kapag optimistic ka, you generate positive emotions, it lower down your stress level, which makes you become more efficient in doing something. Because in general, when people do something, when people perform something, and they are relaxed, mababa ang stress levels nila, mas maganda yung quality ng ginagawa nila. Take for instance, sports. One of the reasons why an athlete will not be performing well or underperform in a very important game is high level of stress. Sa practice, ang galing-galing. Sa practice, very coordinated yung mga movements. Pero pagdating sa laro, let's say basketball, walang na-score. Puro errors ang ginawa. Fouled out of the game. Most likely, that athlete, while in the game, mataas ang level of stress because very pessimistic. Nakita niya how strong the opposing team was. Nakita niya yung babantayan niyang player, mas magaling sa kanya. Created pessimism. And then what happened? Increased stress levels, affected performance. So, para ma-reverse yun, ano dapat gagawin ng atleta? Dapat positive yung take niya sa laro. Dapat maging confident siya na magiging maganda yung outcome ng game na yon. So that athlete will be more relaxed, lower stress, 
and the movement becomes more coordinated, mas nagiging maganda yung performance niya, contributing to the team winning the game. Okay, so those are the two pathways. How optimism leads to happiness, it generates motivation, and it lowers down your level of stress. Now, ano ito ah? Dalawa pa lang yan. Yan lang yung dalawa na present nung article na to, specifically. But if you read the entire literature on optimism, marami pa. More than two pa yung mga pwedeng explanation how happiness leads to happiness. Maybe you can just read that on your own. But specifically for this article, those are the two pathways that may explain how happiness leads to or how optimism leads to happiness. Now, let me connect optimism with God's Word, the Bible. Did you know that the Bible promotes optimism? If there is one psychological skill that the Bible keeps on promoting that the reader should do, Laging pinopromote sa Biblia ang optimism. In fact, it is a direct command for a Bible reader to be optimistic in life. Let me show you some examples where optimism was promoted in the Bible. For instance, the story of Joseph the dreamer. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. Joseph had many brothers. His brothers were jealous of him because he is the favorite of the dad. And so one day, the brothers conspired with each other to get rid of Joseph. Anong ginawa nila? They sold Joseph to the Egyptians and made their father believe that Joseph was dead, eaten by a wild animal. So to make the long story short, when Joseph went to Egypt, ang daming mga negative events na nangyari sa kanya, you can just read that on your own from the book of Genesis. But one of the highlights of the negative events he experienced na pagbintangan siya ng rape. You remember the story, Potiphar's wife, very attracted to Joseph, niyaya siya makipag-sex, Joseph ran away, but Potiphar's wife made an issue out of it. So, nagpakalat siya ng fake news that Joseph attempted to have sex with her, sending Joseph to prison. Okay, so anyway, fast forward from the prison, marami na namang mga nangyari sa kanya up to the point where Joseph from the prison became one of the most powerful officials in Egypt where he was in charge of food supply. Basahin niyo na lang paano nangyari yun, no? So what happened when he became the one of the top officials? One day, nagkaroon ng famine in his family's place that the brothers needed to travel to Egypt to secure food supply without them knowing that the person in charge of the food supply was the brother that they have betrayed long time ago. So you can only imagine, you put yourself into Joseph's, Joseph's shoes. After many years, you see your brothers again, those brothers who betrayed you, and they're thinking you're dead, they don't even recognize you. Diba? I mean, your tendency is to experience something negative and do revenge towards your brothers. Gagantihan mo yan. But if you read the account of Joseph in the book of Genesis, he wasn't like that. In fact, he did not take revenge against his brothers. He was very positive towards his brothers to the point, isa sa mga madadramang tagpo ng story na yan, where finally Joseph revealed himself to his brothers and assured them that nothing bad will happen to them. And then they hug each other some sort of a family reunion. Now, the question is, what made Joseph feel positive towards his brothers in spite of the bad things the brothers did to him? Because Joseph practiced optimism. The way he, he, he saw all the things that happened to him in Egypt, very positive. Specifically, yung framework ni Joseph where it helped him to see everything in a positive perspective is the great Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. Ano yung framework ni Joseph in life? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. So all the bad things that happened to him, ang interpretation ni Joseph John, this is not happening because it's a bad event. This is happening. All these bad things are happening because God has a plan. Kaya hindi siya nagalit sa mga brothers niya. 
'di ba? Na sustain niya yung positive emotions niya by applying this framework that all things that happen to him kahit na negative are all part of God's plan and everything that God plans for laging good yung outcome. Now that's optimism. Another example where the Bible promotes optimism is from the book of Deuteronomy, specifically to the Israelites. Laging sinasabihan yung mga Israelites that whenever they feel down, whenever they feel discouraged, they just go back to their history and remember that day where God delivered them from the Egyptians. Paulit-ulit yan. Kaya nga, kinuman din sila to observe that part of their history through the feast of the Passover where they remember what's written here. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Specifically, ano yung part of their history where they need to remember that? Ano ba yun? Ito yung crossing of the Red Sea. Yung mga words dyan, no? yung brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, it signifies or it portrays this part of their history, which is very positive. Where God, sa harap ng mga Israelites, naghimala. Hinate yung body of water for them to be able to pass through. And then, by the time the Egyptians ang nandyan, sumara na yung tubig enabling Israelites to escape the Egyptians. O, di ba? Kung baga, to paraphrase this commandment, every time you feel down, you always remember the good things that God has asked you. Or, you, you just remember the things that God has done for you. Di ba? Which is an expression of optimism. Last one, New Testament. This is pretty straightforward by the Apostle Paul. What does he instruct people to think about? Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. What do we do? We think, we process about such things. Anong tawag dyan? Optimism. It's being promoted in God's word. Now, for the next part of this lecture, I want to demonstrate how we can use optimism to comfort someone because that's one of the psychological situations where you are required to teach optimism when someone is feeling down okay so how do you give comfort using optimism i want to use the event that happened in john 13 this is one of the passages in the bible where clearly the disciples were down and discouraged because this was the time when jesus predicted his own death Dito na siya nagbigay ng mga huling habilin niya. Mga last wills niya. Because at this point, Jesus knew that the day is coming where someone will betray him, Peter will deny him three times, he will die on the cross. So sinabi niya lahat yan sa mga disciples niya. So the disciples were very down, very discouraged. Let me read that part. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And then he processed what happened. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, so that for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Paraphrase what he's saying here. Gawin nyo pa rin to kahit hindi nyo na ako kasama. Kahit wala na ako. Diba? When you hear those words coming from someone who is so special to you, talagang madadown ka. It's so hard to be optimistic during this time. But Jesus knew. The master psychologist knew that the disciples were down. So let's watch how the master psychologist goes to work to use optimism and uplift the downhearted disciples. Okay? Bago natin gawin yan, balik muna tayo sa definition ng optimism. How do you define optimism? Again, those red words. And let's see, based on what Jesus will say to his disciples, does it fit the definition of optimism? So Jesus starts with verse, with this verse, Do not let your heart, 
roots be troubled. Why did Jesus say that? Because he knew that the disciples were troubled. And this is a principle that we apply in therapy or in clinical psychology. We help the client identify what emotion he or she is feeling. That's step one. Name the emotion. So Jesus named the negative emotion the disciples were feeling here, which is trouble. The, heart's, the heart is troubled. And then, anong ginawa niya? Anong sinabi niya? The yellow words. Now, he promotes optimism. How do you deal with a troubled heart? Jesus says, you believe in God, believe also in me. And then remember, I am going there somewhere to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus was painting a positive future for his disciples. It's like he's saying, alam ko, mahirap maging positive ngayon. But if you just look beyond what you see, in spite of these bad things that are soon to happen, good things will come. Now, you compare those yellow words with, again, how the APA defines optimism, and you decide, pumasok ba? Yung mga sinabi ni Jesus dito, does that capture the definition of optimism? The answer is, yes, it does. Exactong exacto. Anticipate positive outcomes, confident of attaining desired goals, so on and so forth, exactly how Jesus did it. So the next time you meet someone who is so discouraged, na the down, gusto mong tulungan, ano yung steps? Number one, help the person identify the emotions, the negative emotion, and number two, help that person see the good in the midst of the bad. Help that person paint a positive future in spite of the nearing negative events. In that way, matutulungan mo yung tao na pababain yung kanyang troubled heart. Ipakita mo sa kanya yung maganda at posibleng maganda na mangyayari kapag nalampasan niya yung pagsubok. Okay? Other information about optimism. Number one, is it good to expect the worst? One of the reasons why many people are not optimistic or are not practicing optimism is because they are afraid to be positive. They are afraid to be discouraged. I'm sure many of you who are listening may ganyang pattern. Bakit ayaw mong umasa sa maganda kasi ayaw mong ma-discourage? Why do you expect the worst? To lessen the pain. Diba? Common excuse yan eh. Why do you expect the worst? Eh, pinapractice ko sa mind ko para pag nangyari nga yung worst, hindi siya ganun kasakit. Now, is that true? Does that strategy serve its purpose? The journal article that I'm talking about kanina pa answered that question. That's why I highly recommend you read the journal article. It's a very interesting read. In one of the parts of this article, let me read and I quote, Concerns have been raised that these benefits could be offset by increased distress when people are surprised by unexpected negative events. However, there was no evidence that optimistic expectations predicted distress after the events. People were distressed about negative outcomes regardless of their expectations. So, sa article na to, kung babasahin ninyo, there were two groups of people. Those who expected, those who hoped for the best, I mean, and those who expected the worst. Now, if you compare the data, again, the specifics, basahin nyo lang sa article, I want you to notice something here. Yung mga tao na nag-hope for the best, tapos hindi natupad yung ina-anticipate nila, are they discouraged? Yes. Around level 7, they felt bad. But if you compare this with people who expected the worst, ah, hindi mangyayari yan. Hindi nga nangyari. Nagkaroon ng negative outcome. Were they distressed? Yes, but the key finding is the level of distress here is just the same as the level of distress of people who hope for the best. Diba? Kasi, you expecting the worst, ang hypothesis natin dito, because you expected the worst, dapat mas mababa yung level of distress. Because you expected the worst, 
you kinda know it's not happening, dapat mas mababa yung distress. Siguro dapat ito nasa 4 or 3 lang. But what the data is saying, pareho lang pala. Which tells you what? Which tells you, kung papapiliin ka between hoping for the best or expecting the worst, it makes more sense na mag-expect for the best ka na lang. Or sorry, mag-hope for the best ka na lang. Diba? Kasi at least, ang advantage mo dyan, ano, dito, sumaya ka ng konti. The joy of anticipation you gave to yourself. Na-excite ka man lang dito. Tapos, malungkot nangyari dito, then, na-discourage ka. At least dito, may pambawi kang positive. Unlike, if you go here, you expect the worst, dito pa lang, feel bad ka na, and then, na-feel bad ka pa dito, lalo ka pa na-feel bad dun. ba? Diba? So that's what the article is saying. It makes more sense. It's more advantageous for us to hope for the best than expect the worst. And here's the catch. Maybe, ikaw rin ang nag-cause bakit nangyari yung negative outcome. Bakit hindi nangyari yung inaasahan mo? Why? Because maybe you were expecting the worst. Yun na yung effect ng expecting the worst mo. You were expecting the negative outcome. Maybe the outcome would not have been that negative if you expressed optimism. O, di ba? So, panalong-panalo ka talaga if you have chosen to be an optimist than be a pessimist. Which leads me to happiness insight number two for this lecture. It's, it always makes more sense to choose hope, hoping for the best over expecting the worst. And again, as I have demonstrated, the Bible is a book that promotes hoping for the best. Happiness insight number three, again, sinabi ko na ito kanina, but I just want to emphasize one way to make yourself happier via optimism is to force yourself to paint a positive future. Maybe the reason why you are you are expecting the worst is because you cannot see anything good in the future, which is not good for your mental health. When I ask you, for example, where will you be 10 years from now? Are you seeing generally good things or generally bad things? Are you expecting good things or expecting bad things? If you want your future to excite you, to generate positive emotions, ano dapat mong gawin? You need to be seeing good things. Expect good things will happen to you in the future. And again, let's connect this to God's Word. That's one of the reasons why Christians are one of the most excited people on earth. Because Christians, especially those with the right framework, no, when they see the future beyond this life, they see something good. Kaya yung book of Revelation, it's one of the happiest books. It's one of the books in the Bible that should make you happy if you're a Christian. Marami mga tao, pag naririnig yung book of Revelation, takot, hala, fear. Because you are focusing on the bad things that will happen. The struggles of the unsaved. What will happen to the demons. Eh kung yun talaga yung focus mo in the future, hindi ka magiging masaya, matatakot ka. But if you choose to focus more on the good things that will happen to those people who believe in Christ, it will excite you. Kasi ang ganda talaga. Kung basahin may libro ng Revelation, what is the future for people who believe in God? Anong inheritance yung makukuha? Anong magiging buhay after this old earth has passed away? Oh my goodness. It's going to generate lots of happiness. Number two, another thing about optimism, it's not the same as toxic positivity. Now, we have to differentiate, lalong-lalo na ngayon, usong-uso yung mga tao na nagpo-promote ng toxic positivity, no? Hindi dapat. Okay? So, what's the difference between optimism and toxic positivity? Now, here's the difference. In toxic positivity, this is a form of a delusion. You are forcing someone into a reality that's not real. And what is that reality that is not real? You make the person believe that everything is good and he or she should just be happy. You deny the reality of the negative things. Yan. Kapag ang isang tao ginagawa yan, wala ka naman talagang problema. Kaya ka malungkot kasi pinipili mo maging malungkot. Yung problema mo, wala yan. Oh, 
that's toxic positivity or maybe somebody shares a problem to another person and that person quotes a bible verse oh my goodness without even asking about the problem now that can be toxic positivity so in that example as you can see you can also use god's word in wrong ways kaya may mga tao na lalong na i-stress kapag nakakarinig ng god's word eh kasi mali yung atake nung nagsabi nung god's word Diba? You first validate the problem. You first validate the negative things that the person is undergoing and then from there, doon ka ngayon mag-offer ng words of comfort from the Bible. Just make the person feel na yung pinagdaraanan niya is real. It's existing. He or she is not a bad person by feeling these negative things. Toxic positivity blames the person. Bakit ka ganyan? Hindi mo dapat na feel yan. Dapat positive ka lang ng positive. Now, that's toxic positivity. I hope you see the difference. So, you translate this kind of framework into everyday language, di ba? Somebody who is like this, toxic positivity, will say something like that. Bakit ka natatakot? COVID is all in the head. Tuloy-tuloy lang ang buhay. Oh my goodness. Bakit mali yung statement na yan? Because COVID is not just in our heads. We have data that there is COVID. We have data that COVID killed many people. We have data that COVID destroyed many aspects of our lives, social life, economic life, so on and so forth. So don't deny that there's no COVID. Totoo may COVID. You see the difference? Toxic positivity denies the reality of the bad things. Kung baga, kung ilalagay natin tong mga taong to sa continuum model, they are way, way to the extreme side of optimism to the point of being delusional. May sarili na silang mundo at sa mundo na yon walang pangit. Lahat maganda. That's why the sweet spot of being an optimist is not to the extreme optimism. The sweet spot is somewhere just near optimism, not on the side of optimism. At syempre, kapag nandyan ka sa sweet spot, malapit ka lang sa optimism, what does that tell you? Meron kang space for pessimism. Which tells us that a little bit of pessimism is okay. Hindi natin sinasabi that optimism is good and biblical and pessimism is demonic. We're not saying that. In fact, a little bit of pessimism is okay. Ang ayaw natin yung extreme pessimism because that leads to depression. Ayaw din natin ng extreme optimism because that leads to toxic positivity. You see the balance. Kaya gusto, gusto ko yung sinabi ng quote dito. Both optimists and pessimists contribute to society. The optimist invents the airplane, the pessimist the parachute. ba? Diba? Both are good creation. Airplane. Halika, lipad tayo. Woo! Optimistic. Pero meron ka rin konting negativity. Baka bumagsak. Gawa tayo ng something that will save us when that happens. Parachute. In everyday life, a little bit of pessimism makes you do things that protects your life. Kasi may konting pessimism ka, you follow health protocols. May konting pessimism ka, you still review. Kahit walang sinasabi yung teacher mo kung may exam. Dahil may konting pessimism ka, nag-iingat ka kung saan ka naglalakad tuwing gabi. You see? So again, it's not always bad to be pessimistic. And it's not always so good to be super optimistic. You see, there is a balance between the two. O ano naman yung optimism? Now that we know what's toxic positivity, what is optimism? The key word to remember here is reality. You promote positivity while you still acknowledge reality. Something is wrong, but there is a way out. So you acknowledge something is wrong. Something is ugly, but there is beauty behind it. You still acknowledge that something is ugly. Realistic. People who are optimists, ganyan. They see the world as it is. Punong-puno ng positive things, punong-puno ng negative things, but bakit sila optimistic? They choose to process the good things without denying the reality of the bad things. You see the difference? Kapag super optimistic, delusional na, 
ah, buburahin niya yung negative. Sasabihin niya, wala. Wala naman talagang negativity sa buhay. Lahat masaya. Heaven on earth. Yan ang toxic positivity. But optimism balances the two. I choose to see the good in spite of the bad. In fact, there are times the bad can lead to a good. Yan ang optimism. That's what I like about this song entitled Rainbow. Hanapin nyo na lang sa YouTube and play it if you want to hear the song. Pero napaka-realistic talaga nung kanta. It's promoting optimism. Not toxic positivity. It says, But you're stuck out in the same old storm again. You hold tight to your umbrella. Well, darling, I'm just trying to tell you that there's always been a rainbow hanging over your head. Kung baga, i-translate mo tong song na to into an image, it looks something like this. Nasa iisang picture yung negative and positive. Merong dark clouds, but an optimist person at the back of his or her head, I am undergoing something bad right now, but I'm sure. And I choose to see. And I will do my best to see what's good in the midst of the bad. May rainbow somewhere here. And that's what I'm going to look for and choose to focus on. Kaya sinabi ni James, di ba, in one of the passages, whenever you undergo trials, be happy. Oh, hindi sinasabi ni James na be happy kasi yung trials hindi totoo. The trials are real. But what will make you happy is when you know that after you undergo this trial, something good will happen. In this case, you become better person. You become stronger spiritually. It will create perseverance in you. Pero hindi niya dinideny na may trials. May trials talaga. Pero focus ka doon sa mangyayari sa iyo kapag nalampasan mo yung trials na yon. Now that's optimism. The more you see that, the more you see the positive outcome under the trial or after the trial, I mean. The more you generate positive emotions which will help you go through the negative circumstance. Okay? So, i-translate mo to in everyday life. A person who is optimistic will say something like, madami nga aralin for the exam, pero marami pang oras mag-review. You see the fusion between the negative and the positive. I have cancer. Anything can happen. Pwede akong makarecover. Pwede akong mamatay. But regardless what happens to me, God holds my future. If I make it, praise God. I still have more time with my family. If I don't make it, praise God, because finally I can be with Him. Realistic. Fusion of the positive and the negative, but processing the positive more. So in closing, let me just summarize all the happiness insights I presented in this lecture. Those are the three ways how to be happy in connection to optimism. Okay? So, sana marami kayo natutunan from this short lecture on optimism. Kung meron kayo mga comments, ilagay nyo lang dyan sa baba. And then, I'll see you next lecture. Alright? Thank you for listening, Sir Howard here. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.